Hello, everybody. Welcome to beginning programming using Python. Python is one of the most popular languages in use today. And if you were to uh, go to a site that ranks the programming languages, you'll see it show up in the top five almost every time. So it's right there with Java and uh, C as far as that goes. So it's a very popular programming language, and it's a very easy language to learn and to use. But if you want to use Python, then you must first download it to the operating system that you're using. The place to go for all things Python is just python.org. So this website is like the home for all things Python, and you'll find a tremendous amount of information there. If you're just beginning, as I assume you are with this, then you will need to go to python.org for the purposes of getting Python. So here you see the main page, and as you scroll across the menus, then you will see the Downloads menu pop up when you put your cursor over it. And if you're running Windows, it's really easy. You can just click Download Python right here for Windows. Then when it's downloaded, you just run the executable, and you have Python on your Windows machine. If you are using other kinds of... Uh, of, uh, operating systems, then you can get those as well. So here you can see we have Windows is available, Mac OS, and other platforms. Let's click on Windows. Now this one's already here. It says download for Windows, but if you click on Windows, then this takes you to another page. And you'll see here that a long, you have a long, long list of releases for Python. You do not need to be concerned about those as you scroll down because those are older. But if you are on this page, you'll notice that you have the latest release and then you have the stable releases that are shown here. You always want to get the latest stable release. So you can also download Python from here as well if you want to use it for Windows. Now let's go back to Downloads and let's look at Mac OS. So here you get the latest releases and the stable releases for the Mac. So if you are running a Mac OS, then you would want to download this Python version here. So under stable releases, then you would get the first one. And it's the same process. Download it and then run the executable on your Mac and then you're ready to go. Well, what if you have um, other kinds of operating systems? Well, under other platforms, then you can see there are other things here that you can use. All right, so if you happen to be using some of these other platforms, then you can download Python from there as well. And in fact, if you're running a uh, Linux version, then you probably already have Python installed. So that's how you get started. Just go to python.org, and then you download the uh, version that you need for your computer, then you just install it. Now, while we're here, at python.org, let's look at some documentation that might be handy. Now, as I said, this is a full-fledged, full-up Python resource area, so there's a lot of stuff here. But under documentation, you'll see something called the Beginner's Guide. So that might be useful. So if you click on the Beginner's Guide, then it takes you directly to the Beginner's Guide for Python. So this might be very helpful. And in fact, if you scroll down, there's a place here for downloading and installing. So here's a complete list of Beginner's Guide pages. And if you click this Beginner's Guide download, then it takes you in gory detail through what you need to do in order to download and install Python. So that is the, uh, the first step in getting started. Once you've downloaded and you've installed Python, then you will want to run it. And depending upon which operating system you're using, you will start Python. And in the case of Windows, I'm using a Windows machine, then I just started it from the uh, start menu on the bottom left-hand side. So this isn't um, terribly exciting when it first starts up. So you'll see this window, and at the top there are several menus that I want to show you briefly, and then we will look at some simple programs. Notice that this says the Python version, and then it says shell up there. So this is the actually the interpreter. Uh, Python is an interpreted language, which means that as you type commands, they will be executed immediately. 
You'll see the cursor blinking just to the right of these, uh, these three triangular braces. And if you knew something about Python, you could go ahead and type in some commands. And here's one we'll be using a lot. So just to show you how this works, you can type print and then uh, inside parentheses and double quotes, then you can just print out something and it will go to the screen. So I'm going to do hello world, double quote, close parentheses. And this is a Python command, print. So I've typed that into the interpreter. Then when I hit enter, then it executes that command. So here's the result. It prints hello world out to the screen. So you can enter in uh, commands directly from this window, this shell, and you can have those executed immediately. Let's look at uh, some of the uh, menus across the top. So these are fairly limited. They're not going to be really extensive uh, in terms of the number of options compared to something like Visual Studio, for example, Microsoft Visual Studio. So you'll see some familiar things, some familiar things. They have a new file, and you can save them. You can save a copy. You can print from here and so on. Um, the Edit menu, uh, we will look at that shortly, but you have the ability to edit an existing file. We don't have one right now. And there are several things across here, but notice there are very few, very few uh, menu items or uh, options available. As we move over towards the left, I mean towards the right, then you'll see there's a help at the far right-hand side. And this may be useful. Uh, let's select uh, the IDLE help. What does that mean? Well, idle, idle is the thing that we're running right now. It is the Python integrated development environment. So if you click the help selection here, then you will get another window that pops up and it will tell you all about the menus. So if you have any question about what an item on the uh, menu happens to do, then all you have to do is to, uh, select help and then you have a summary of all of the options for all the menus. And you can see it's pretty, it's, it's not very extensive. It's simple to read and it's quick to read. So that's available. So let's close that. Then let's also look under help and look at Python documentation. You can also bring that up by hitting the F1 function key. So this gives you the complete Python documentation set. So as you can see here, this one is very comprehensive. It has everything that you need to know about Python. So if you need to look something up, you can bring this documentation window up and you can search here in this uh, text box for a particular item that you might be interested in. As an example, I have typed in turtle graphics in the, uh, the index, I'm sorry, the text box here to search for things. And the page turtle graphics has appeared over here. So you can use the search and you can look up anything you want to know about the uh, Python language and then uh, it will go to that particular item. Uh, Turtle Graphics is something that we will be looking at in this course and it's included as part of the Python library. So the, um, it's kind of neat, it's fun to play with. If you happen to know anything about Logo, then it's kind of based on that. See, it says the Logo programming language developed way back in 1967. So this is incorporated into the Python language and we can use it in order to draw things. So here is an example and this is something that um, I'll come back to in, in later videos. Now let's go back to uh, the help and let's go look at the help menu again and there's a neat thing here called a turtle demo. So using turtle graphics, then you can generate animations and you can draw things. So here is an example of that. So let's bring this window over here and let me resize it a little bit. So the turtle demo includes quite a few uh, different things that uh, people have done. So let's just look at some of those to get an idea. So under examples, you have a list of things that uh, you can do. And let's just pick one, like the uh, Penrose is a design. So if we click that, here's the code, which is uh, too complicated to go into right now. But if you click Start, 
then you can see the graphics that are generated. So here's an animation of a Penrose, which gradually goes into more and more detail. So you can stop it. Uh, let's look at another one. So under examples, if we wanted to do like a rosette, you can select that, click start, and now you've got this animation. So the uh, turtle graphics, those will be fun to play with, and we will use them in uh, various applications as we go through the term. Now let's go back to the shell, and we did a print hello world, and you did see that that shows up on the screen. And I'll just do a couple more examples while we're here. Let's suppose we wanted to do like a simple addition, and that has to be lowercase, print. And then inside parentheses, we could do a little calculation like 5 plus 4, and then close parentheses. Then when you hit enter, then you see the result is 9. So this does this simple calculation, and it gives you the answer. If you wanted to print out words or uh, what we call strings to the screen, then you include that with or enclose that with double quotes. So let's say we'll do welcome to Python, double quote. Then you close parentheses. If you want that to go to the screen, it prints out welcome to Python. So that's how this interpreter works. You type in a command, and then it executes that command, and it gives you the answer. Well, in many instances, we have to we would want to do many commands all together as a group. So normally, you don't really use the interpreter like this so much. We really want to make a file, and we want to put a bunch of Python commands in that file, and then we want to execute it. To do that, we need an editor in order to type in our uh, commands in Python. So you can use um, pretty much any editor as long as it's not something like Microsoft Word that puts in a lot of extra um, notation when you create the file, but a text editor works just fine. And this uh, Python does come with its own editor. So if you go to the edit, and then, uh, I'm sorry, if you go to the file menu and you select a new file, then the editor will come up. So the editor then is just a blank page. So in here, you can type in commands. So I'm going to do just a, a few of those. So we just type those in. So I am going to do a print, and then in parentheses, let's do welcome to Python. And then double quote, and we'll close that. And then let's print, uh, let's do a calculation. Let's do 5 plus 4 plus 7. Not equals, but plus. Close parentheses. And then let's do something else. Let's say print. And just print goodbye. And then we'll close that. Let's make that correctly BYE. Then close parentheses. Then we have made a file. Well, Now, we've made a little file. So if we save this, so we'll do file, and then we'll just do a save as. Then you can save this somewhere, right? So you just find a location where you want to save your files. And I'll put these. I've got a folder on the desktop that I'm going to use. And I'm just going to save it in here. Okay, so let's just do uh, hello. Dot .py. Now, this is important because the extensions for Python have to be um, .py. So that's the extension that you need. So it's a .py. Now, this will save the file as a Python file. So I'll click Save. Then, if we want to run that, then we can just use our little run command up here, run menu. We can do run, run module then we go back to the shell. Okay, see, we have the shell window showing up. So there's the editor, okay? And when I click Run, it brought the shell back to the front. So we're running the shell, but this time we get all three of these outputs showing up. So we have Welcome to Python, and then we calculate 16, and then we just do Goodbye. And I still didn't spell Goodbye correctly. 
goodness. All right, so I need, let's go fix that. Uh, so I'm going to stop the program at this point. Well, actually, it's already stopped, so I don't need to do anything. So anyway, let's go back over here and let's change, let's edit this and do the correct spelling of goodbye. And I'll save it again. So we'll save it. And then when you want to run this little file that has these three commands, all you got to do is to click Run, Run Module, and then the shell pops up, and it does all three of the commands that are in the file. So generally, this is what we'll be doing. We'll be creating a file that has all of the statements that we want in our program, and then when we run it, we'll see all those statements execute and come out to the screen here as part of the shell. So that will get us started then. If you are able to do everything I've shown you, then you could download Python, you can install it, and you can go through the menus, and you could even do a tiny little program. So that's all we have for this video, and in upcoming videos, we'll start to look at the language itself and uh, programs that we can do with Python.